Indiana University head coach Tom Crean. Just a reminder, please identify yourself and your affiliation. No video is allowed in here. Raise your hand if you have a question. One of our assistants will find you with a microphone. Uh, coach Crane, Chris Foster with the Los Angeles Times. When you look back to when you were got here at Indiana, what did you think needed to be accomplished or some of the things that needed to be accomplished to get you to this point? When we first started, sir, when we first started, well, there was no way to put it into context when we first started. Um, Really, what, what what I thought I knew about Indiana and and uh, the, the Indiana that, that I would have imagined that wasn't what it was at that time, and and uh, a guy like Dan Dockich did a really good job uh, of trying to fix it in a short period of time, you know, before the season ended, and 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 made some points that, looking back on it now, they made a lot of sense. And and when we got in there, it was it was just a lot different, and and there was no way to start thinking about where we were going to end up because literally we had to get a team ready to be on the court that year with 28 points coming back. So a lot of our time was spent on recruiting for that season, um, spent time re recruiting that, that upcoming class, which was obviously going to be paramount. A lot of time spent uh, recruiting the younger classes. But I think the most important thing is every day that, that passed and we realized that we were in a tough situation, we needed to make sure that the fans were so great to us and so gracious that we had to make sure that we kept them with us because we were starting to get a feel day after day that this was going to be really, really hard. And and the bottom line is they stayed with us and our former players came back in droves. And as, we, um, as we've gone through it, then you start to really look forward to the future and, and to get to points like this. But when we first got there, th there was no way to, to think clearly on anything for the really past the next couple of days. It was all about what's going to happen next, how are we going to handle it, and how do we get a team ready for this season. Has it, has it progressed as you quickly as you thought, or is it a little quicker? There's no way to quantify it. I, I, I think, like I don't even use the word patience with our fans. I mean, nobody knew what they were being patient with. I mean, nobody had been through it. And uh, I certainly hadn't, and, and our staff hadn't been through it. Our players hadn't been through anything like that. So there, there really is no way to quantify it. I mean, we just had to keep getting better day after day. Now, the vision never wavered. I mean, it really didn't. We always knew where we wanted to end up, and we're continuing to try to get there. But as far as for putting any timeline on it, especially especially with the, with the way that it, we had to literally have a brand new team that first year, there was no way to have that timeline in place to say we're going to do this in X amount of years. Kevin Bowen, Indiana Daily student. Coach, you talked last night how you, your staff's barely seen Tim in the past few, few days. Can you kind of talk about what your staff has done since the game ended last sure. night until today, getting ready for? Well, see too much of Tim now, but uh, uh, he's been he, he's been diligent. He's been helping uh, all of us. We got back at it last night. Uh, Right away, brought the team in for a little bit. Tony Larusa spoke to him again, which was really good. And then the kids went to bed and went to see their families, and, and we continued to work. And uh, uh, we've just spent a lot of time watching uh, segments of how they play. We've spent a lot of time trying to, to really understand their pressure, to understand the things that are not as normal for our guys of what they've seen. You know, a lot of times your concepts can take care of some of the things you see in a short turnaround, and there are a few things. But this is a tough preparation because of their pressure, because of their, you know, we see a lot of good pick and roll teams. This team is no different. This team doesn't take a backseat to anybody we've played in pick and roll basketball. Uh, they do a lot of switching. They, they, they make you get ready for a lot. And so we've tried to take that time, not inundate our, our players with, with a ton of information, but try to keep giving it to them in bits and pieces. And then this practice that we have this afternoon will be very important. Go back there first and then in front. Bob Kravitz, Indianapolis Star. Is there any way to replicate their their pressure in practice? Greg Marshall from Wichita State said that he was using six guys on the press to try to get his guys used to not having time and space. Is there any way you do that? Or what will you try to do? Well, I don't know if we'll do it today. What we've done, what we used to do to get ready for Louisville's press back at Marquette is we would, we would start it with eight and drop it to seven to six and then give them confidence at five. What we've done at Indiana is more seven on five. And... Uh, 
rotate guys in maybe sometimes from different spots. I don't know if we'll do a lot of that today because we've got to, we've got to put a couple different pressure releases in. But, but there'll be some live action. There'll be some stepping through traps. Uh, there's, a, there's some definitive places that VCU wants you to catch the ball, which is like most pressing teams, which is deep in the corner, and then, and then try to get you to throw it back underneath the basket. And, and they do an excellent job. And this is not a, a game where I think we're going to be able to bring fatigue to the game. Like we, I thought we were able to bring fatigue to the game last night. And I think this team is deep. I think they're used to the way that they play. And we're not going to be able to replicate it as much. So it's really a lot more about how strong we are with the ball, what our vision's like, and, and what our mindset's like in seeing that press. Coach Ken Bykoff inside Indiana. You, you and your coaching staff have been through NCAA tournament situations before, but is there a balance between trying to get as much work done as you want, but also getting enough rest so that you stay as crisp as you need to be? For the players or the coaches? For you. The coach. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it's more important for the players. I mean, there's a, it's adrenaline. I mean, it, it really is. It's a lot of, I mean, nobody's tired. I mean, the coaches are excited and, and uh, we're locked in. There's a lot of dialogue. Uh, the one thing that I like to do back home is I, I like to get away and really kind of watch a lot of the games myself before we sit and have meetings. It's a little bit harder to do that right now because there's less time, but, but our conversations are great. But, yeah, you know, nobody's sleep deprived. I mean, we, we get the balance. You know, went for a run before I, got on the, before I went up, changed, and got on the bus to come over here. So we've got pretty good balance. In that. It's most important for the players that, that, that they stay fresh, that they stay excited, that, that they absorb what we're trying to give them that it's not so much that it goes in one ear and they don't really comprehend what you're trying to give or did you do it in bits and pieces. That's the one thing I learned a long time ago. I saw Tom referenced, uh, Tom Izzo referenced 1998 when we were playing Eastern Michigan and Princeton and and uh, in Connecticut and that's very much uh, where that formula was created and, and really happenstance. It's it's it was late at night and and it was very short meetings for the players and it worked. You know, so I've adopted that. I know he has and and that's really what you try to do to keep them at a at a fever pitch. So when that game time comes, that they feel great, that, that they feel prepared, but yet they're they're really rested and ready to roll. Coach Matt Calkins with the Columbian. Uh, you've had success at multiple programs now. You coached Wesley Matthews at Marquette. So now that there's a, a coaching vacancy with the Blazers, I imagine it's just a matter of time before we see you here in Portland full time. Well, I think Tim Buckley already told Bob that he is not a candidate for the Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, right. No, it's uh, we, we leave we leave the uh, declarations of not being involved in jobs to John Calipari, not me. So. <laughs> And I told him I was going to say that, so I talked to him today. I don't get a chance to talk to many, but we were sharing notes. I say that in complete jest and with respect and with respect. <laughs> Coach, obviously, Ellen, Indiana Daily student. Uh, Maurice Creek is the guy who's had to sit through this magical season, obviously, on the sidelines. And then last night, he's, you know, in the civilian seats. What was that like for him last night? And then what has it been like him? What has it been like for him for the whole season? It's a great question. I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, I, 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 I hate that. You know, I, I, if there was one thing that anybody gave me, one, uh, you can change one thing about the NCAA tournament. It would be to have a few more people be involved in that bench. And it's just the way that it is but we ha you know everybody down there's got a job to do and and I, I always wanted to make sure before we went out that, that he understood there was really no way around that and, and there's nothing against him at all but I've had three or four people tell me including the guys last night that were near the Tony La Russa and my friend Dick Strong they kept talking about how great our guys were at calling things out and Maurice is a big part of that and, and when you hear something like that because I'm not tuned into that during the game I'm tuned into it on the bench but th that's a great thing Maurice has, Maurice has got a maturity about him this cannot be easy and, and uh, it's it's so hard there's no way to be in his shoes when you look at this and you look at that while he's had to endure with those three surgeries within 22 months 
but he keeps coming back. There's obviously no way he would have been able to play this year. He's never been able to practice with us other than maybe shoot a little bit. But but I, I just there's no question we want him to have the success that, that he so you know truly and richly deserves moving forward. It's like why it's so hard to deal with when a guy like Verdell Jones puts so much into this, does so much, and then can't play in this. And then you think about where Maurice has been the last couple of years and again, I mean if we've said so many times to him and his mother said it to him, God doesn't give you anything that you can't handle. And I, I think Maurice is living proof of that and really, really proud of the way he's continued to respond and mature this season. There and then down in front. Coach and Alex Bozic inside the hall. Just what about their pressure uh, makes them so effective at what they do? A lot of teams obviously maybe try to press, but BCU seems to be able to do it better than anybody. What have you seen kind of out of their pressure that makes it so effective? Well, it's their length. And you, grew up, you grew up in Louisville, so you know what, what that length has been like with what Rick has done with those presses at Louisville because it, it, it's, the, it's the intensity of it. It's, it's that, that there's a toughness to it, but it's really, really hard to play against that kind of length. And, and they have tremendous length, and I think they do an excellent job of pushing you in a spot. Their traps are really hard-nosed. I mean, they close their traps. They're constantly coming at you if you get an advance with the back-tipping procedures. So you've got to do a great job of catching the ball where you want to catch it. If you catch it where they want you to catch it, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be in the deep corner. There's going to be two defenders that are alive, and there's going to be a baseline and a sideline line that now turn into four people. And, and we've watched so much film where people have in that situation, and there's no way to catch capitalize on that. So where you catch it, what you do on the next pass, those are the most important things. You know, your fundamentals really come into play, getting the ball out in front, reversing the basketball, head up, all those types of things. But if you asked one question, I think it's their length. Or one, one reason, I think it's their length. Coach, I'm not asking for any specifics, but what was kind of the overall message that uh, Tony LaRusso gave the team yesterday? Well, you know, it, there were a couple different ones, and this is why when you can have speakers that can give you real-life situations, there's nothing like it. It, it's, it's, um, it was like this when Jim and John, my brother-in-laws, were in a while back. He really talked about things that made their Cardinals team special and, and uh, the things, the messages that he gave them. And when you look at their team and when you look at how it, it was just, I mean, we got a lot of Cubs fans in there, you know, and he took a few shots at them, which is okay. But but the bottom line is everybody can respond to a message when, when, when they've been through it to a degree. I mean, that team was really, you know, they, they were close to being out of it. And and there wasn't really a lot of people uh, mid-year, end of the year, that were picking them to go anywhere. And, and and their team really rallied around one another, and he gave some of those examples. And I think, they're, you know, they, they hit home with our guys. Lindsay Schnell, the Oregonian coach. Cody's obviously from a basketball family. Can you talk about the advantages of recruiting someone like that who's watched siblings have success and then what he's really done to help your program get back to this point? Well, the recruiting part of it is, is nothing was going to phase him. The recruiting never phased him. The, they had a plan. They had a process. I think they, you know, I don't know this for sure, but I think they probably learned and developed this process when Luke, the oldest, was going through it and Stephen Laurie had their oldest son go through it and, and they probably had it down pretty well when Tyler was going through through it and it was it, it was nothing new when Cody was going through it so really it was truly an honor to recruit him and and the day that he was making his decision uh, it was a Thursday I believe I'd gone to get some breakfast and I made a call to his father and, and it was on my part it was somewhat emotional because I said I don't know how this is going to turn out but I know how I hope it turns out but it has been an absolute honor is the parents of our three children my wife and I to be able to watch how they have raised theirs especially Cody and I say that because nothing was going to speed them up nothing was going to distract them they knew what they wanted to do in a sense of how they how they were going to have it play out and that's exactly how Cody is as a player. I mean, you're starting to see it with the jump shot last night. You're seeing it with the driving. We see all those things in practice. It's a comfort level that he has when he brings that comfort level to the game that he knows he can do those things. His game takes another, another step. 
That's why he's as good as he is right now. There's so much great basketball ahead of him. And uh, that's really what the recruiting process was like. It was fun to watch him get better. It was fun to, to get to know him. It was fun to see the process that they used and the things that were important to them. And as I've said many times before back home, when the, when the Zellers are able to write a book, uh, I'd be the first in line to buy it when it comes to, to, to how to deal with your children, how to raise them, and in the same sense, how to have people that have that kind of attention bestowed upon them. Uh, uh, there is there there is real a deal of family as, as as you could ever possibly imagine to have all this attention that they get. Tom, is there anything that you can draw upon from Butler's national semifinal victory over over VCU? You know, we haven't looked at that yet, and, and we haven't looked at a couple of tapes that we want to look at from them yet last year. So that's a good question. Uh, I think the bottom line is, is is we go through what we want to do to attack them today and then be able to get back tonight, watch the practice film, and decide, okay, this is is this what we want to do? And spend some time tonight and even maybe tomorrow morning a little bit on, on some bits and pieces from last year. But, but uh, we've seen enough of how they've just destroyed certain teams this year with their pressure and that's where we wanted to get our guys attention more than anything else I think you want one thing that helps us and helps these guys is when they can see okay if this team would have done this if this was open look at how they're handling this and I think our guys start to get a better example and at the same time they see just how good it is we have uh, time for about two more questions Tom, how important tomorrow is it for all five guys to be able to ha handle the pressure and not just all Jordy? Oh, it's very important. It's important that anybody's in the game. As we've said to the team last night and this morning, everyone's got to be a decision maker, everyone's got to be a handler, everyone's got to be a playmaker, and everyone's got to be a finisher. I mean, it's just the way that it is. I mean, it's to, to expect one or two people to, to break this pressure, th that's what they would want. And, 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 uh, and certainly... We will miss Fordell. I mean, there, there, there's no question. Or, there's no way around it. We will. But at the same time, that, that other guys have got to step into these opportunities and play with confidence and strength and toughness and uh, decision making. And like I said, execution equals recognition and, and, and recognizing what's there and what the defense has given us. And we've just got to go play. Tom Dustin, the Pierre Bloomington Herald Times. Um, how much did Vic and Will, I guess, just change kind of the attitude of this program, and just how are those guys different and similar personally? I guess that's a good question. I think they came in when they came in a year and a half ago. They came in with a tremendous work ethic. They they, they established right away that they were going to be full time. Uh, the recipients of the, of the of the benefits of having a place like Cook Hall, and and they were in there a lot. You know that we'd see them in the summertime bouncing in and out. And Jordan would be in there a lot. They helped really bring an even stronger work ethic to the program. Even more of a as simple as this sounds, it's really it's really sometimes kind of complex. They love basketball. I mean, they love it. And and there's very th few things you could ask them about the game or about college or pro that they wouldn't have a clue on. They love playing it. They love following it. And that kind of permeates inside of your team. And, and they came at a time when guys were kind of at the crossroads. You know, how much do they love it? We're not winning. You know, all this hard work, all this stuff that, that I'm asking them to do and we're doing and we're not getting a payoff for it. And these guys really brought another level of energy to the program. This past summer, it went up a couple more notches. And, and uh, uh we had a lot more guys that had a hard work, work ethic, gym rep mentality this spring, summer, and fall than we had had in the past. And some guys changed, but I also think there was, we got to keep up. This is going to be really, really competitive. And, and Will and Victor led the way, and I think there's no question that, that, that the success that we're having this year, when you look at how their improvement has been, a big part of it. It speaks for itself. I'll take a question here, and if we have time, we'll go in the front for one last question. Justin Albers inside the hall. Coach, I know your players talked about this last night, but can you talk about the way Remy Abel played in the game last night and how important he will continue to be for you guys going forward? Well, Remy's fearless, and I think that's a, that's a big part of it. You know, Remy uh, is hard to deal with in practice. He, he's he's hard to guard. I mean, when I say hard to deal with him, he's, he's really hard for them to guard. He gets to the lane. He's strong. He's got the strongest lower body on our team. He's had some very good games. He's had some instant offense games. I think the Purdue game at Purdue gave him tremendous 
tremendous confidence that, that he could be a big part of this team and help lead it to victory. And uh, uh, there's no question that, that he's now got another coach in, in Verdell sitting there helping making sure that he's ready to go, sitting by him in the film room. Those things are important. They, they really are. And, and But again, the biggest thing is he's fearless. So I don't think he gets, he doesn't get too tight or wound up in all of this. And he's, uh, he's played in a lot of big games in his mind, and this is just another stage for him. Thank you very much, Coach. Oh, that will conclude our news conferences for today. Tomorrow.